Previously, we learned that the Israelites entered into a covenant with God. Or rather, God entered into a covenant with the people of Israel. God told them that they have to obey Him and He will bring them to the promised land. But what happened? The Israelites rebelled against God. No, They made a golden calf because they were impatient. They were panicking. Where is Moses? Because Moses was gone for 40 days and 40 nights. So they decided to make a graven image saying that, okay, this is our God. This is the God who brought, at, brought, brought us out of Egypt. But what happened? God was angry. Nasuko ang ginoo. Wala nalipay. That is why Israel broke their covenant with God. But through the intercession of Moses, ni Hangyo gives him Moses, um, Moses said that uh, if your presence will not go with us, do not bring us from here. And the Lord relented. The Lord changed his mind. The Lord renewed his covenant with his people. And the Lord renewed his covenant invoking his attributes, who he is. No? Sabi na, I am a gracious God, merciful God, forgiving sins. And sabi na, uh, it's because of God's grace. Despite of the disobedience of the people, God decided to forgive and restored his relationship with his people. Now, we're now in chapter 35, no? which talks about the building of the tabernacle. Yung, yung, yung plans about the tabernacle, this was already given by God to Moses in chapters 25 to 31. But they did not make the uh, tabernacle yet because of the sin and rebellion of the people. But once the Lord has restored the relationship, then God told the Israelites, now it's time for you to build the tabernacle. By the way, what is the tabernacle? Basically, a tabernacle, that is the place, the dwelling place of God on earth. Ito yung panimalay ng Lord, no? And it is a temporary structure. It is, it's, it is a tent. Uh, and then it could easily be dismantled, no? If the Israelites need to travel and then he assemble afterwards, no? If they stay in a place. And do you know that the content, the contents in chapter 20, 35 to 39 is almost similar to chapters 25 to 31. May mga similarities. In fact, kung magtingala mo, uh, the only difference is that in 25 to 31, God gave them ha- uh, the plans on how to build the tabernacle. Whereas chapters 35 to 39, they actually built the tabernacle. And if you notice, sa 35 to 39, uh, in, nakabutang siya in past tense, meaning the people uh, carried out the commands of God. The people build the tabernacle. So you may be wondering, nga no, giulit na, na, ni, ano, ni, ni Lord no? sa passage. So one thing for sure, if it's not important, then the Lord would not have put it in our Bible. So the purpose, I think, is to stress and to show that the Israelites finally obeyed the commandments and instructions of the Lord. And secondly, the purpose is to show the faithfulness of God. Faithfulness. Remember, um, the people broke their covenant. If God is a man, dapat mo ingon na siya, adi nako, di nako magpadayon kay gahing na ulo. But we can see here the faithfulness of God, despite the sin and rebellion of His people. God still kept His promise because He promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that He will make them a great nation. So, uh, tumanon ni Lord ang iyang promise sa ilaha. But before the people started building the tabernacle, God reminded them of the Sabbath in chapter 25, verses 1 to 3. So let's read the passage no? in chapter 35, verse 1. Moses assembled the whole Israelite community and said to them, These are the things the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days, work is to be done, but the seventh day shall be your holy day, a day of Sabbath rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it is to be put to death. Do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. So so you might be wondering, the Lord is commissioning the people to make the tabernacle. Since this is the work of the Lord, um, you might be thinking, probably God will exempt them from observing Sabbath. But no, God did not. No, Although yung trabaho nila is for the building of the tabernacle, 
It's for the Lord. The Lord reminded them that they need to take the Sabbath rest. And what is the purpose of this Sabbath? Itong Sabbath rest, it, this is a sign, no? Sign of the covenant. This is a sign as between the people of Israel and God na the Lord rescued them from Egypt. This, as the same way as the yung circumcision, which is the sign between God and Abraham. So, itong ano, chapter 35, verse 2, this is a, if you notice, uh, this is a repetition of the commandment in chapter 31, verse 15. And it is stated here that if anyone will work, he is to be put to death. So, ganun ka seryoso ang ginoo, no? Kung, kung wala ni mo gituman ng Sabbath uh, rest, pwede sila patyon. And then, uh, it's stated here in verse 3, Do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. That is why um, the rabbis, no, they, they made rules that they are not supposed to cook. They're not supposed to heat up food. So, bawal sila magpainit ng pagkaon. And up to this day, they're observing it. The last time we went to Israel, um, pag Sabbath, uh, bugnaw, no, mga pagkaon, no? Kay ang ilang mga pagkaon, gipainit nila a day before. Uh, and then, um, uh, you're not allowed to drive a car because if you drive a car, parang there will be combustion, no? Uh, but of, obviously, there are exceptions, no? That's why yung mga drivers nila, yung mga Gentiles, no? Usually, usually, uh, Gentiles, kasi they are not bound by the, by the Sabbath. And uh, interestingly, I heard, no? They're, they're, they have gadgets, no? Na timer, no? Na mag, uh, timer na uh, magpainit ugsudan, no? On Sabbath. So, yun. But uh, we can see here the very strict yung observance of the Sabbath. So I, I understand that we have uh, mga Seventh-day Adventists, no? So I'm not so sure how they observe Sabbath. Um, do they observe Sabbath just like the Jews na dili sila magpainit og sudan? Kasi if, you are very, if you're going to follow the Sabbath law to the letter, then uh, that's very restrictive, no? Very strict, no? And, and yung during Sabbath, they have to observe time of prayer and devotion to the Lord, no? To remember what the Lord did to them. And then in verse 4, we can read here, Moses said to the whole Israelite community, this is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat hair, Ram skins dyed red and another type of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for, for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastplate. So we, we can see here, um, although the, 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 the construction of the tabernacle is the plan of God, the Lord was the one who initiated it, but the tabernacle making is a joint project of God and the Israelites. No, dili lang ang ginoo ang naghimo sa tabernacle. In fact, if you come to think of it, the Lord can create the tabernacle on His own. He can say, okay, uh, He can bring the tabernacle from heaven down to earth. No, but wala gibuhat ng ginoo. No, the Lord wanted the Israelites to have a part, to have a participation in the making of the tabernacle. So what was the participation of the people unsa ilang contribution so makita nato dere in verse 5 6 and 7 that the people uh, donated materials voluntarily naghatag sila mga materials like any mga gold silver bronze mga mga linen etc so you may be wondering asa gikuha no na mga israelites ang mga materials now where did the israelites get all of these materials we can find that in exodus chapter 12 verses 35 to 36, when God um, made the Egyptians favor, favorably disposed to the Israelites. No? So what happened is the Israelites asked for uh, whatever they want no, from the Egyptians, and the Egyptians just gave it to them. Why? Because during that time, God killed the firstborn of the Egyptians. That is why, um, syempre, nahadlok sila, and, and gusto nila mamahawa ng mga Israelites. Sige, hawa na mo, hawa na mo. And then they, the Egyptians gave everything, anything that the Israelites asked. That is where the people got all of these materials. No? Uh, 
so basically, the, the, the Israelites plundered the Egyptians. No? So what can we learn from here? No? What insights can we learn? So matunan na um, to Giving to the church is one way of giving uh, of getting involved in the work of the Lord. No, uh, giving in the church, not only the church but to charity. That's how you 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 uh, no, to, you you serve the Lord. No, um, because if if we use our money properly, ang atong kwarta gigamit sa maayong ano uh, ang ang kwarta nato magamit sa ministry ni Lord. No. That's why we are encouraged to give as much as we can as our conscience dictates us so that we can give it for the glory of God. Why, why do we give, by the way? Why do we give to the, to the, to the ministry of the church? Because we, we know that everything comes from the Lord. Gikan niya tanan-tanan. No? Since gikan niya, para na to, dili bugat, no? Kay, dili man ato ah. Ihatag, ibalik na to, hatag kaniya. Anyway, the Lord does not want um, that we um, well, the Lord wants that we give our life to Him, but it doesn't necessarily follow that tanan atong assets, bibaligyan nato and give to the Lord. No, um, We are allowed to have our own. But the point is, our perspective in life and as well as the, our perspective in uh, property, ownership, stewardship is different. No, Because we know that kane, all of these things are just entrusted to us. No, Gihatag lang nato as steward at the end, end of the day, we are to account no how we made use of all of god's blessings no you know ang ang paghatag no generous giving could only be possible from a new heart a heart that is transformed by grace because we know no it's by grace pinagi sa grasya ng ginoo no gihatag niya yang bugtong anak nga mamatay sa krus alang sa atong sala it's because of his grace no so if you come to think of it, diba? supposedly, mamatay ta sa impyerno, pero giluwas ta. So we are given a, a second life. no? That's why we believe that all, all of the things that we have no, is not ours. That is why we give it to the Lord. no? We use it for God's glory. We, we give to the Lord out of gratitude in response to God's grace for us. no? So we have to be grateful. The Israelites, grateful sila. Why? Kasi ang ginoo, gi rescue sila from Egypt no out of the land of slavery ikaduha they committed a sin and yet god decided to restore their relationship uh, with them I, I think a good analogy no sa mga couples no usually um di ba ang couples no uh, pag madugay na they will tend to uh, to grow cold but pag mag-away sila no and then pag mag-away and then later on um, they will uh, make up, no, and then they will rekindle, no, and then usually um, the guy will give gifts, no, willingly because just to appease. <laughs> and here, um, etong scenario, de ba? The people broken the co- broke their covenant with the Lord, no, and the Lord restored the relationship. That's why they were so happy, no. They, they're so willing to give out of gratitude. Na, Thank you, Lord, na binigyan mo pa kami ng second chance. No? So they were so uh, uh, willing to give whatever the Lord needed for His work. No? And in verse 10, uh, all who are skilled among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. So not only did the Lord ask for the materials, pero the Lord called the skilled Workers from among the people. Okay, paarihan ni mo sila. Why? Because they are to make what? The tabernacle, verse 11, the tabernacle with its tent and its coverings, class, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the ark of the covenant with its posts and atonement cover, and the curtain that shields it, verse 13, the table uh, of showbread, no? Uh, with the posts and all its articles and the bread of the presence, and verse 14, the lampstand that is for the light with its accessories, lamps and oil for the light. So, gitawag ating mga workers kay daghan ang buhaton sa tabernacle. So, it's listed here, no? Aside from that, in verse 15, we also have the altar of incense. In verse 16, we have the altar of burnt offering. Then, verse 17, the curtains of the courtyard. If you remember our ano, our sermon on the tabernacle, um, if you look at the picture, so many, no? 
uh, so many details, so many furnishings inside. And obviously, kailangan ng skilled workers to make all of these things. And the good thing is, you know, in this story, you know, God was the one who initiated the building of the tabernacle. God was the one who provided the materials by allowing the Israelites to plunder the Egyptians. And also, God provided the people to make the tabernacle. So, makita na to, tanan, no? Ang Lord Yud nag, uh, nag-provide tanan, pati mga tao, pati yung mga um, uh, paghimo sa tabernacle. Also, in verse 18, uh, the tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard and the ropes, the woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary, etc., etc. Okay, after reading all of these things, no? How does this relate to us? Okay, so, nahibawa na to, ang mga Israelites, they were willing no, to give their skills for the Lord. So, how does this apply to the church right now? Well, the Bible teaches that kita tanan, mga Christians, no, we have our own spiritual gifts. We have different gifts. no. All of us are given something which God can use for the building of His kingdom. For example, some, uh, some are called to be preachers. Some are called to be uh, uh, given, given the gift of giving. Some teaching. Some uh, no, um, helping. No? Uh, in fact, we can see in Romans chapter 12, Verse 6 to 8, no? It is stated here by Paul. Sabi niya, We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it, it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And aside from that, ingon po ni Peter, no? sa 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. Kita tanan, we are given gifts of the Lord. No? Some people were given more gifts no? because more is expected of them. And usually, the more you give back to the Lord, the more God is going to bless you. I'm sure not everyone is called to be a pastor. No? So, hindi lita ng pastor. And some people are called to be teachers. No? Um, tagaan mo patients. Uh, for example, mga children. No? Uh, uh, just for you to know, our church have a children ministry right now no? going. Uh, every Saturday, we hold classes for the children. So, mga Itudloan nato sila, mga about the gospel, about the Bible. So, the church needs people, no? Perhaps you have the skill with the children, no? Meron kang patience sa mga bata. Kasi kabalo ko, ako wala ko'y pasensya sa mga bata, no? Wala ko'y mga pasensya, but ang ubang tao na yung pasensya, no? So, if you think that you have this God-given gift, no? Of patience with the children, then God is calling you to help out in the children's ministry. Especially mga young people, no? Especially right now, that you are having your summer break, no? Maybe you can spend time, no, to help out, no, in uh, teaching these children so that they will get to know the Lord. Because alam natin, no, ito mga kabataan, these are the uh, our future generation. And what better way is uh, what better way than to introduce them to our Lord Jesus Christ, so that even in their young age, they will learn to fear and love God, no? And ang ubang tao. Uh, they're given the gifts of encouragement or empathy. You know, um, perhaps your presence here is an encouragement. So, ang uban nato siguro naguol pero smile lang mo, no? Pag nag-smile mo ang ang naguol malipay pod, no? Because of you, no? Or sometimes, no? If you know somebody in the church who is sad, no? we can uh, reach out to them, no? That's why we need each other, no? Dili nato pwede pabayan ng isa, isa no? So we reach out to them, encourage them, motivate them. Ang uban siguro gitapol na, na discourage ilang eskwela, ilang trabaho. They don't, they don't see the purpose in their life. Then you encourage them. That is a gift. You have to use that, use that to build up the body of Christ, no? So um, other people are giving, given the gift of generosity. No, there are people. No, are really generous. 
Kay mga, may mga tao na ako talagang kuripot masyado, no? Na diligyod ganahan mo, gawas o kwarta lisod. But there are people, they are so willing to give, no? As long as it is for the Lord. Then you give generously because that is God's gift for you. And some people are given the gifts of leadership. No? Um, if you are given the gifts of leadership, then you can start by serving in the church. No? Once the people notices you, when the pe- once the people notice you, then they can uh, ask you to leadership position. Because ang, ang leadership sa church is different from the world. The world says, you have to serve me. But kita, we serve each other. Okay? So all of these spiritual gifts, we should not uh, waste it. We have to use it to build the body of Christ. In fact, we need each other. No? Just like a body, di ba? mayroong ulo, may, may head, eyes, ears, nose, hands. So we are not all hands, we are not all head. Kaya puro tayo ulo, so sige ta debate, no? wala tayong ba- mahimo. Pag puro tayo kamot, wala yung ulo, lisod po kayo. No? So all of us are important. No? So ayaw na po ingon na, na wala kay kwenta. If, in fact, even our anus is important. No? So bisan dili ganahan mga tao niya, pero importante kay kung magrebelde yan, mag-shutdown. <laughs> kung dili magtrabaho ang, ang atong puwet, no? mag-shutdown. Dili good kali, <laughs> dili good uh, mag, maglisod yun ta, no? So we need each other. The point is we need each other. Just like the Israelites, no? They serve, they serve, no? They give whatever they have. Some of them, they give materials. Some of them, they give their skills and talents. Uh, just like in the church, no? S- uh, serving in the music ministry. Uh, that's why uh, we, are, we are plugging in, no? That uh, we are inviting people, no? To serve in the mu- music ministry. In fact, this summer, we're going to conduct a music class, no? Bisan Kinsa no? In- invited mo to join if you know anyone who might be interested to learn instruments. No? Then encourage them. No? Tell, ask them to come. No? Kung na mo yung mga relatives. No? Uh, no age limit. No? Uh, as long as you have the heart to be used by the Lord. You will be surprised. The Lord is going to bless you. Okay, let's go to verse 20. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence. And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service, and for the sacred garments. So makita nato, no? After Moses told the people to give willingly, what was the reaction of the people? They willingly give out of their heart, whatever their heart desires. So wala... Lord, no, you have to, each of you must give how much, how much. No. It's up to them, no? How much were they willing to give? So they brought the offering to the Lord, no? For the work of His temple. And in verse 22, we read here, all who were willing, men and women alike. So, bisan laki bay, they, 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 they give themselves to the Lord. They came, they brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, Ornaments, they all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins dyed red, or the other durable leather brought them. Then verse 24, those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord. And everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. And then every skilled woman span with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill span the goat hair. So may mga babae no, um, na nitabang. Because during that time, um, women are given low status. But here, they were mentioned in the Bible because they were so important because without them, dili gud mahimo ang mga furnishings or yung mga tent ng tabernacle, no? So these women, they span, no? they nagtahe sila, no? Uh, sa sa ano yung sa, sa mga linen para sa tabernacle. Then verse 27, the leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and the breast piece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. Verse 29, 
all the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. So grabe no, all, tanan, all of them brought something that they are willing to give. Walay pugsanay ha? They give willingly to the Lord for all the work that needs to be done uh, in the tabernacle as God had commanded Moses to do. So, what can we learn from this one? So, we can learn the principle that God loves a cheerful giver. We can look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 to 8. According to Paul, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So we can look at this passage that God wants us to give cheerfully to Him, not out of compulsion. So kung ako, ang sige, gusto sa'yo mong kasing-kasing. In the Old Testament, the Israelites were required to give one-tenth of, of whatever they have for the tabernacle, for the temple, kasi that 10% will be shared to the Levites. But we're now in the New Testament. We are not required to follow the tithes. No? We are not required. The word is required. Hindi, hindi, tayo, hindi tayo compelled. But instead, we give willfully. Not because the Lord forces, uh, forces us to. Ang Israelites, they have no choice. They have to give. Because if they don't give, there are corresponding punishment. No? Uh, in fact, the Lord said to them, no? if they do not give, they are as if they are stealing from the Lord. Pero sa New Testament, walang sinabing ganun. No? Walang sinabi pag hindi ka nagbigay, you are stealing from the Lord. Instead, God wants us to give cheerfully whatever that we want in our heart. So meaning, we are not bound by the 10%. In fact, we, we can and we are encouraged to give more than the 10%. And we are, not, uh, we are not condemned if we give less than 10% also. So we can see here, the Lord wants yung voluntariness, cheerful heart. Just like for example, I'll give you a, 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 an example. If you are a parent, what would you want? Do you want to tell your child, anak, you have to give me 10% of your income to support me. You have to give me during my birthday, you have to give me Get this and that. And then, ang imo anak, walay mahimo, oh, sige, sige, may, uh, because sabi mo eh, I have to give. Or rather, you would want your child to give you cheerfully without you asking. No? Dili na ka mga isa anak, mas gusto ni mo, ma, ito, kwarta, para na kay makaon. Na, diba? You want your children to support you without you telling them. No? Because you would appreciate it out of their heart. No? In the same way, the Lord we are in the New Testament. The Lord does not say that, okay, all of you, ha, ikaw, ha, naghatag ba ka sa imong tithes? No? Diba parang, parang, where's the love there, no? So the Lord is not commanding us. In fact, we are free from the law kasi this is the difference, no? We are not under the law. We have the grace of God. And because we have the grace of God, we willingly give, no? We willingly support our parents. We willingly support our uh, family members. Not because we are compelled, no? Not because we're compelled. Kasi kung compelled lang, di ba, parang mabigat, no? Um, kasi if you remember the story of the Pharisees, no? And the tax collector. Sabi ng Pharisees, Lord, buti na lang ako, I'm not like this uh, tax collector. Because, you know, I observe the laws, I give my tithes, I do this, do that. But, what did the Lord say, no? Uh, he's not justified. Instead, yung tax collector was justified. Sabi tax collector, Lord, I'm nothing. I'm a sinner. I don't deserve you. But, kinsa mas justify? Sa mata sa Diyos, mas justified itong tax collector na wala siya nagtuman sa tithes, but he recognizes God's grace. So in the same way, first things first, we have to recognize and accept God's grace for our life. No, That is the most important thing. Once we have accepted God's grace, no, giving is natural for us because it is a natural response to God's grace. We give out of God's grace, not because we are compelled. No? So, yun. 
So very important na, na we are not under compulsion, but rather we give cheerfully. In fact, in the Bible says, though, we are to offer our lives as living sacrifice. So everything we have belongs to the Lord. If the Lord says, you give everything, you give everything because it's not ours, no? Even our life, our time, our talents, para kay, ay hatag nato sa ginoo. And interestingly, makita nato sa 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Sabi niya, and God is able to bless you abundantly. If you give, God is going to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, okay, you have all your need, you will abound in every good work. In other words, this is my interpretation. The Lord gave you more so that you can give more to the Lord. So, so that you can devote whatever God has given you to good works. No? Makita na na you are using uh, the things that He has given you for His good and for His glory. He's going to bless you. Kasi alam niya, the more He gives you, the more you're going to give back to Him. Diba? So, maganda yung... Uh, yung uh, analysis ni Paul. No? So let's go to verse 30. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled them with the Spirit of God, with wisdom and with understanding, with knowledge and all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. So we can see here, no? God has chosen Bezalel, uh, and God has filled him with spirit, with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and all kinds of skills. So kaya si Bezalel, kaya yung chief artist nila, no? Siya yung chief designers, chief architect, no? And how did he have those skills? Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. It's the Spirit of the Lord who gave him wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. So I think the same is true, no? If you're going to serve the Lord, then we ask for the Spirit to help us, to give us wisdom so that we can understand His Word, so that we can preach His Word, so that we can teach His Word, so that whenever we conduct Bible study, tagaantaw kaalam ng ginoo para magamit. No? So everything comes from the Lord. So, Bezalel is the chief architect, no? He is an artist. So, gitagaan siya skill para magamit sa ginoo. In the same way, the Lord may have given you uh, talents, skills, no? In music, no? Uh, and then you have to use it for God's glory. And the more you use it, the, Lord, the more the Lord is going to bless it, no? And verse 34, not only that, he, meaning the Lord, has given both Bezalel and Oholiab, son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. So, gitagaan si Bezalel na very good skill, not para iya lang, pa, pero itudlo na sa ubang tao. That is why, church, it, it is our, uh, going to be our summer project, no? Whatever skills we have, we have to teach other people, no? We have to share to them the skill uh, we have, no? So that they can be used by the Lord. No? Dapat hindi na pwede, pwede nato idamot, no? Na, Okay, I, have, I, am, I already know how to play violin. I just keep it to myself. No. We are the body of Christ. We share our skills. We teach other people so that we can build each other up. No? So we train other people to conduct Bible study so that in the future they can stand up and lead Bible study on their own. No? So we can see here, no? Importante, tagata skill, we use that to teach other people. And verse 35, God has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, embroiders in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. So let's go to chapter 36, verse 1. So Bezalel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Kasi kung lantaw ni nato ang plano ng gihatag ng Ginoo, the Lord did not say that this is how you should design the uh, curtains. This is the shape, mga sizes, wala. Uh, the Lord just gave the artistic skills to Bezalel and it's up to him, no, to make a design through the spirit of the Lord. In the same way, um, the Lord has given us skills, no, 
But the Lord will not dictate dapat ganito, step by step. The Lord has given us, us creativity on how we can use our skills for His glory. Okay, and then in verse 2, chapter 36, verse 2, Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So, gipatawag silang Bezalel, okay, and then gihatag sa ilaha ang materials. And guess what? The people keep on bringing every day. Imagine every day. Every day. So, every day nasa gihatag na gold, silver, bronze, materials for the building of the tabernacle. So, verse 4, we can see here, so all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and they said to Moses, nagreklamo sila, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. Nagreklamo sila na sobra-sobra na ang magipanghatin mga tao kanila. So they have a, a very nice problem. <laughs> they have a very nice problem. Sabi na, enough na. Sobrang dami na. Sobrang dami. This is too much. No, this is too much. So I wish that inana po ta, no, mag-give kang Lord, no? na muingo ng simbahan, sakto na ayaw na mo paghatag. <laughs> Kay, wala na, di, mapuno na, puno na. <laughs> Let's go to verse 6. Then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to, ma to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained, gipugnan, from bringing more because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. Sobra-sobra na ang materiales. Undang na. Gipugong na mga tao. <laughs> Imagine, the people were restrained because they gusto pa may maghatag. Ayun ay, na, ayun na, sakta na. Ipugnan. Okay, just to give you an idea, how much materials were they able to collect? Okay, let's uh, fast forward muna. In chapter 38, verses 21 to 31, they made an inventory of all the materials. Do you know how much materials was uh, donated? Gold, almost 1,000 kilograms of gold. Silver, around 3,400 kilograms of silver. And bronze, around 2,400 kilograms of bronze. Inana kadaghan. Remember, I, we talk about the menorah? It's, it's, uh, it, it weighs one talent. It's uh, several hundred. It's very expensive. No? If, we compute, if we are going to make a pure gold menorah, it's going to be expensive. So we can see here, Number one, the generosity of the people. Grabe sila, naghatag sila, no? Moto, gipaundang pa sila, ha? Kung wala pa sila gipaundang, bas daghan pa ang makuha nila para sa aghimo sa, sa tabernacle. And also, we can see here how much the Lord blessed them, no? How much the people were able to plunder the Egyptians. So grabe, inalakadaghan ang nakuha nila sa Egyptians that they were able to offer to the tabernacle. And also, this uh, inventory of materials show Na the tabernacle was so lavish, so grand, because God deserves nothing but the best. God deserves nothing but the best. So let's go back uh, in verse 6 and 7. So what happened here? Gipugnan mga tao no? to, to, to bring. And so we can see here, no? yung generosity of the people. No? Uh, all of this came from uh, as the response to God's grace for saving them. So they give not because they feel obligated, but because of their jo joyful hearts. No, they give out of their cheerful hearts. Because remember, ang atong kinabuhi, it's not, this is not our own. No? This is God's gift for us. That is why we, we should be willing to use our life to teach other people, to minister to other people, to give back to the community. And not only do we give our money, our possession, but also our skills. I want to um, end the sermon with an illustration. No? There was a great fire in 1666, which uh, leveled London. Grabe, it's a great fire, no? Uh, a lot of uh, places were burned in London. Um, and uh, the, at that time, there was a, uh, a very famous architect, Christopher 
Wren, I, I'm not sure if I pronounce this right, Christopher Wren, he was commissioned to rebuild St. Peter's Cathedral. So one day he was uh, supervising, no? Uh, Christopher saw three brick layers. Uh, one of them, nakaduko, uh, one of them uh, half standing, and the other one is standing tall. No? And the last one was working very hard and fast. So Christopher asked the first bricklayer, What are you doing? Sabi na, Well, I'm a bricklayer. I'm working hard so that I can support my family. Nagtrabaho ko, araw na ko yung mapakaon sa ako pamilya. Ah, okay. So, sa so next worker, nangutana sa Christopher. Okay, what are you doing? Sa, sabi ng second uh, bricklayer, I'm a builder. I'm building a wall. Ah, okay. And then, Christopher proceeded to the last one. Ito yung pinaka-last one. Pinaka-kugihan, no? Uh, most productive of the three, no? He asked, he asked this person, What are you doing? Sabi niya, I'm a cathedral builder. I'm building a cathedral for God. So we can see from the story that these three bricklayers are doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing. But they have different perspective no? toward their work. To the first man, para niya, it's just a job so that he can feed himself and his family. The second one, he treated his work as a career, an occupation. He's a builder. He finds uh, fulfillment as a builder. But the last one, he view his work as a calling. As a calling. Kasi para niya, he's a cathedral builder. He's doing this for the glory of God. So the question is, which type of builder are you? Are you, how do you treat your work, no? Your work, your studies, uh, your business, how, how are you doing? Are you just doing it uh, kasi, uh, wala, para may makaon lang? Kay para na pambayad sa utang? Kay na utang? Sige, pambayad utang? So, parang you're living in a rat race, no? Utang, trabaho, bayad utang, trabaho, bayad utang. Or, do you find it as your parang career or as your parang that's who you are? Or, do you find it as a calling? You're doing this for the Lord. You're doing your best, not for yourself, but for the Lord. No? You're doing everything for God. And I hope uh, we will be like the, the third bricklayer. And may we be inspired just like the Israelites. No? They gave whatever they have. No? Yung ilang uh, materials, wealth, talents, skills, they dedicate it to the Lord. No? So those are the two lessons that we can learn for this morning. God loves a cheerful giver. We give out of our response to His grace. And second, we should use our gifts, no? our talents, our skills for the glory of God. We should use whatever profession, business, uh, studies, occupation, etc. We do it all for the glory of God. At the end of the day, we will face the Lord. By the way, all of us will be judged both unbelievers and believers. But there's a difference. Some unbelievers, they will go to eternal death, go to hell. But as Christians, if you have Jesus in your life, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you, can be, uh, you will not be condemned to go to hell. But the difference is that uh, you will still be judged, no? The Lord will judge you what you have done on earth. Pangutanan ka, unsa yung imong gibuhat sa kalibutan? Unsa yung imong gibuhat sa imong kwarta? Unsa yung gibuhat nimo sa imong talent? Unsa yung gibuhat nimo sa imong studies? Sa imong trabaho? Sa imong negosyo? Are you doing all of this for me or for yourself? So I think this is a reminder for all of us and also for me. No? Um, kasi sometimes when we do our work Parang it becomes so routine, parang paulit-ulit na lang, no? Sometimes we lose sight on what is important. What is important is not ourselves, but the Lord. That at the end of the day, we, hopefully, we may hear Jesus telling us, you good and faithful servant. Diba? Y- yun, yun ang ano, yun ang, yun ang the best ano, uh, compliment makuha natin. Not the mga praises of people, not the, 
the, the grades that we get, not the, the titles that we have. No, they're, they're nothing because all of this will fade away. In fact, sabi sa Bible, di ba, we will be rewarded and the tagaan taong mga um, crowns, no? different crowns. So, may we aspire, no? Dapat hindi lang ordinary Christians. So, dapat we have to aspire to receive all of these crowns, no? And we can receive these crowns by using our money, our talent for the Lord. So, this is a challenge, church, for us and a reminder. Okay, so can we all please stand? Let's pray. Salamat, Lord, sa imong pulong. Thank you for reminding us that everything comes from you. And uh, our life, our body, our wealth, our business, our work, our job, our studies, all of this no, are given to us as a steward. And it's our prayer that you will remind us, Lord, on how to take care of the things that you have entrusted to us, that we may use these things, Lord, to glorify you, that we may use this to give cheerfully to you, not out of compulsion, but out of a willing heart. And it is our prayer, O oh God, that we will have that heart of generosity, a heart that is willing to give because you have given us much. You have given us your Son, the Lord Jesus, for us. And we cannot thank you enough. Giving back is not enough to thank you for everything that you have done for us. And although, also we pray, O oh God, for the skills of your people, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, that you will convict the hearts of these people, O oh God, of your people, that we will be challenged, that we will be united to serve the church. No, that kami tanan, Lord. All of us will serve in our own little way, whether it be in giving, in encouraging people, in smiling at, uh, and, and encouraging and being uh, sympathizing with our fellow brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will use us mightily, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, that as you continue to use us, Lord, that you will continue to bless us, Lord, that you will continue to bless us so that we may give all the more to you. Thank you, Lord, for you deserve all honor, glory, and praise. And we just want to surrender everything into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, all this we pray. Everybody says, Amen. Thank you, Lord.